Hello everyone and thank you for coming to the channel. That channel is Deb Chanel's 48th World and I'm back with another video. We're going to be talking about this up and coming YouTuber just a little bit. His name or his YouTube channel is Hustler and Housewives. This is the guy that Candy Burris shouted out or got under his timeline and tried to tell him what he was saying that was going to be happening on this show was not true okay gave him his little uh, few minutes of fame which was excellent if that's what he wanted to have on his channel okay but i would have been in there texting her back what you mean this ain't true tell me what the real t is then come on with it you're gonna slide in my dms and tell me what it is instead of saying that's not true well what is it then that's what i would have been doing but Oh, it just is what it is. But we're going to be talking about Portia, 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 because that's what he was talking about on his show. Just going to tell you a little bit. But go on over there and um, view his channel. It's kind of funny. He's comical. Nice looking dude. And all his stuff is allegedly. And he just pretty much said he just get this little piece of paper out and start reading nonsense. <laughs> and I'm like, man, you should be on S uh, what's that, Saturday Night Live, child. He just be like making up shit or maybe somebody feeding it to him. Candy Bird, so you over there feeding Hustler and Housewives. Are you feeding him information to put on his show, girl? Oh, Lord. But anyway, that was funny, funny, funny. He goes on and tell what he's going to talk about or what's happening out in them YouTube streets. And he's going to bring it to you. And then he gets out this little piece of paper. Or I read in some of his comments from his uh, viewers. His scroll and go on and start talking all this mess. But like I said, you got to go over there and see, see what you feel. See what you get out of it and go with that. But anyway, his big piece of resistance to his piece of his video was saying that Portia Williams family fighting at Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> I'm like, okay. All right. I said, what are they fighting about, Hustler? What are they fighting about? You know what I'm saying? This in my mind. Child. They are uh, fussing about how Portia and, uh, well, really not Portia, but Bravo is portraying them and their family. And they don't like it. <laughs> like, shame on you, family. Shame on you. Because if you haven't been watching Real Housewives of Atlanta from the time it came on the scene, to up to this scene 13 and we finna go into the 14th season shame on you shame on you don't bring Portia because Portia over there trying to blend several family members together her family member with Dennis her family member with Simon Gabadia her family members with the Jose Williams feed the hungry clan the ones that want to be put on a pedestal yes I'm saying yeah but Diane done taught her some tricks of the trade because Alva don't fall too far from the tree Diane done taught her how to get up there allegedly and get them men that got money that's way past their 60s okay so she can have something where she don't have to be working she can just be spending out they money i would say sugar daddy but when you with that man and he's with you and it ain't just for y'all then it ain't no uh sugar daddy type situation okay it's more so i'm in this relationship i am securing the bag and that's all it pretty much is and i think diane taught her that you know this is my feeling i get in my good because i'm still trying to figure out what diane does and she's been on the show uh, with her daughter porch for a long time and it really hasn't come to play on what she really do or we haven't really seen her in action at her job only thing we've seen she's been in the house with some joggers on looking like she want to eat but then she's trying to make this thing where she's trying to be watching what she eats and just a whole lot of mess you know and i'm like if you taught your uh, daughter how to get older men and secure the bag where you don't have to work, you just live off them, then okay, to me, that's like prostitution. That's just like being a madam that, you know, but hey, if that's where you get down, get down with it, okay? It ain't legal in most states, but I guess if no, no money is being transpired at the act of the sexual encounter, then you can't really call it prostitution and can you but anyway uh yeah <laughs> it's a hot mess hot mess prince hot mess hot mess 
Portia thinks she done secured the bag with this old gentleman that thinks he's hot to try. He got businesses coming out the Wazooka. But the people that I've known and watched and somewhat admired that are moves and shakers and they got businesses and they're very um, financially secure. They ain't not him on no blogging posts, on no Instagram, on nobody's social media. They in them boardrooms, they in uh, behind their desk, on their computer, making shit happens. Okay, that's what they doing. And next time you see them, they on Forbes 500 list. You know what I'm saying? And you ain't really getting no interview with them if you don't know them from, I guess, before they became who they were. They don't know you. <laughs> they don't know you. Okay, but they came on, meaning they, meaning Portia's Williams' dad side of the family, the Jose Williams' legacy side of the family. Now, they couldn't come on too much when she was first starting, okay? Because she was with Cordell, and Cordell was trying to take all the shine. But this is Miss Elizabeth. That's Miss Elizabeth's mother, okay? And she was up there with Jose, meaning her uh elizabeth dad jose williams feed the hungry they all came together and founded the organization well jose and the their mother um juanita was the pinnacle pieces of the foundation of the jose williams feed the hunger organization and you know i don't know what elizabeth called herself that's elizabeth i don't know what she uh she called herself doing by coming on the real housewives of atlanta listening to her younger family members because that's them you know they what you listening to them for they just want to pretty much say okay we're gonna ride off our family's legacy and uphold this that and the third but did they really tell you that jose was a minister yes he was jose was a womanizer Jose was a wife beater, allegedly, and Jose was a drunk. Okay, now I can testify to that. Now, he had a little bit too much to drink when I was about maybe 8, 16, 17 years old. I was working at Kentucky Fried Chicken on Glenwood. He used to come up there drunk, okay, riding his Cadillac. You know, he's supposed to be this act activist. You know, like I said, he, he wore many hats. He was an activist. He worked uh, advocating uh, working with Martin Luther King and stuff like that, and, and and he was a minister, okay, but first and foremost, he was a man, okay, he was a man, S separate him from all those accolades, but, you know, people just want to show you the real deal, uh, what they feel they want to show the public. And that was no difference from Elizabeth's dad, Jose, the Williams, Jose Williams, okay? He was a man at first. And like I said, he had many, many flaws. But, hey, that's how God makes sinners into saints. Am I correct? All right. Then everybody has a past. They don't want to bring it up. They just want to show you the good side and want to down other people for doing, you know, mischievous things type things and and think they higher than the next person when they should stay just like everybody else so if portia want to float out here and be a jezebel spirit running around here and having you know her legacy brought up when it it means to be an activist or uh, she's trying to make a point trying to advocate for something positive you know how she did with that black lives matter and she turned around here and fooling with somebody's uh allegedly husband that wasn't fully divorced from them before portia got with him and that's that man right there simon gabadia and i can't blame simon i can't blame simon i can only blame portia because she brought him into this situation she didn't have to go around here she had dennis the man that was fooling around on her, out there, you know, dating women behind her back, screwing them behind her back while she was pregnant. And, you know, she was still trying to hold on to the faith of, I'm going to keep my family. Everybody ain't perfect. Yeah, he did what he did. But, you know, I know this man and this, that, and the third. But she wouldn't sign that prenup. <laughs> she would not sign that prenup. So, I really personally don't feel what, what uh, the fuss is all about at Thanksgiving dinner over at the Portia Williams house. I don't understand. Yes, Cash, she was over there from what Hustling Housewives saying. They got in an uh, argument about how this show is portraying um, their legacy. And the old heads were getting on the young heads for trying to be letting people exploit what her uh, Elizabeth father, Jose Williams, was out there doing and advocating for. Such as, you know, Porsche Williams was out there trying to be on her dad's side, advocating for Black Lives Matter, you know, discrimination, police brutality against the minority brown people and all that kind of stuff. And Elizabeth trying to say she blaming uh, the younger folks in the uh, 
Williams family for wanting to get on this Ratchet TV show because they're tarnishing what her father built. I'm like, okay, yes, your daddy, Elizabeth, was a reverend. Yes, but he also was, you know, partaking of the spirits. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the drinking spirits, all right? And he had a little bit too much, and he's going around here getting arrested for being drunk and, and disorderly, you know, conduct outside in the public. He was getting arrested for that. Now, of course, he always felt they were just getting on him because he was an activist, and he was trying to call out the cops for you know being uh over overly aggressive with the black community you know what i'm saying i'm like no okay we can agree with that but can we agree jose your dad was a drunk he partake too much of the spirits all right i'm just saying i'm keeping it real because i partake of that uh scene myself i saw him in action i saw him as he skipped several curves you know trying to get to that main street because he was inebriated and I, I can say because it was true that was my truth of meeting your dad at this one time because he loved himself some Kentucky Fried Chicken. And he always felt that we needed to give him his food free. I'm like, man, what are you talking about? And my manager was like, is that Jose Williams uh, cutting up at that drive through I said, yes, it was. He wanted me to get his food free. He got kind of ugly about it. And he said, well, I don't know why he thought that. He just like every other person. He got to pay. But, you know, I kind of felt that, you know, if my manager was up there, he probably would have gave it to him free. But Jose didn't want to pay. He showed it. He was mad as hell. But anyway, that was just my story and my truth of what I experienced of, you know, um, Jose Williams. But anyway, uh, yeah, they signed up to come onto this. Whether they wanted to believe Portia, maybe Portia sold them a bag of goods that wasn't true. They still knew what Real Housewives of Atlanta was was about so do you not think they were going to take some of that so-called bad negative energy and put it in Portia Williams show family matters did y'all really think they were going to show y'all in a positive light well let me give you some land that I don't have but I'm going to say I have that I want to sell you okay it's almost like I'm scamming you in a sense all right but if you want to believe it you believe it and you know it just is what it is at the end of the day so I ain't going to say you got bamboozled. I ain't going to say Portia showed you a bill of goods that wasn't true. Because you know how these reality TV shows get down. And then you going to come on and try to check Portia from what I've seen from this first scene of her new show. That, you know, why you marrying this man? You tell me you're going to be number four. Are you taking this a little bit too slow? I mean, too too fast. You shouldn't be getting married to him. We don't know nothing about this man. You know, and all the comments and goings. That is a perfect recipe for Ratchet TV. Do you not think the elites are going to make hand over fist money and pay Portia whatever they want to pay her? And then I don't even know if y'all getting paid to be seen in such Ratchet way. Well, Lauren's used to it. You know, she's used to it. She don't help support her half sister uh, or she claims her sister. You know, it don't need to be no halves, but, you know, it just is what it is. However you get down on your lingo or how you uh, put stuff out there. Uh, but um, they share the same dad, I think. They don't share the same mom. Because at first, I'm like, no, Lauren is just either too close to them or she's just too with them all the time. Because really, she seemed like she could be Diane's daughter, meaning Portia Williams' mama. But, you know, I guess if you hang around somebody, you start looking like them, you know. And I, I, I can attest to that. I can attest to that being true. But for them trying to jump on poor Portia, when they knew what the game was, I called foul on Elizabeth and the rest of her family trying to show up and show out on this show. You you signed up for it. I don't know if you were getting a paycheck off of it, if she was going to cut y'all in, or she just gave y'all notoriety to hopefully it'll be a season two, and uh, she could convince y'all, or y'all can uh, convince y'all selves to come back on if they're going to pay y'all. And I'm sure y'all will like it for an episode of $1,000. You know, if you it's it's $1,000, right? More than what you had. But anyway, you know, or be like Tanya. Be like Tanya. Get the heck off of the show don't make it a part two you know don't come back for season two uh tanya did very well being a friend of the show and when it got too hot for her and it got too messy and she knew she wasn't gonna mess up her brand or who she wants to be seen out in the public ass she got out of that shirt she said uh, -uh, uh, -uh nope i don't want to be a friend i don't want to be nothing forget y'all knew me well you know y'all could see me from past episodes but i wasn't too bad but this other place and how y'all tried to show me at cynthia bailey's um what do you call it um um what do you call it wedding 
uh, shower they were giving her. How y'all try to pray me? Uh-uh. Can't do it, won't do it. I'm gone. And I, I ain't heard nothing else from her. I ain't heard nothing else from her. And it just is what it is. I'm like, girl, I'm glad you got a clue. Out of all this time, but it took that situation to see. And then your ex, I mean, your uh, fiance probably told you, don't get back on that show. Don't get back on that show. Because I ain't finna be bothered with this mess. And they ain't paying you that much. And you really don't want to be on that. You still making bank. Girl, uh uh-uh. They're going to show you in a bad light. And that's what people going to remember you as. They're going to remember you as what we do every day. And who the real people, everyday people we be moving and shaking with. And people that are private, that are uh, financially stable. They don't want to be mixed up with nothing like that. It, it, like, no. So, that's probably why she got off. And I'm like, applaud her all the way to the bank or to her uh, good life she's living now. Uh, not being attached to the show anymore. Okay? Because it's ratchet. It would tear you up and tear you down. Because it ain't got nothing but bad negativity in it. But it just is what it is. But, uh, yeah. Hustle, pl- hustle and housewives. That's him. Go and partake of his show. He's an up and uh, up and coming new YouTuber out there, and you know he has some good points to say. But like I said, he just be reading off this piece of paper that nobody can see, and sometimes he show it, but it, it's probably got nothing written on it. And he just goes on in his dialogue. <laughs> and I was like, man, please. The stuff that you saying, it can't be true. But you are very entertaining with it anyway. But, uh, yeah, I was like, nah, Elizabeth. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce her African last name. But she's Jose Williams' daughter, okay? And I'm like, you know, I, I just don't understand it. How good, wholesome pretending to be people want to come on somebody else's show and then they don't like you know in filming and everything and at the end of the day you don't like the way it's being shown but they already showed you from past seasons past episodes how they get down did you think you gonna be any different i mean Portia has a storyline now that's so crazy that don't nobody like Portia too much more. I mean, I, I, I'm i sitting up here on the fence with Portia. And it's kind of going to the negative. Because I don't like how she brought out this thing in her book. Talking about R. Kelly. I'm like, are you serious, girl? Are you serious? If you wanted to help the one, the women. Or women in general. Or uh, trying to stay away from people that want to hurt women. Uh, why you didn't come out when the game was getting good? Okay. Why you didn't come out when the game was getting good? That's supposed to be Portia Williams' dad. And I'm like, okay, Portia Williams' dad, Diane being her mom, she saw that Portia Williams' dad was an up-and-coming businessman as well as uh, he was being surrounded by some heavy hitters of the civil rights activists, meaning his dad was a big part of that, uh, making a change for black and brown people. And uh, or lower in the uh, minorities, uh, lower income people, and um, her mama latched on to him. Was it for notoriety? Was she thought she was gonna get a big payday off the Williamses? Well, hey, it didn't last long because they didn't stay together, okay? So I'm like, is this what Portia from uh, being a little child was witnessing her mother trying to date influential, uh. Uh, financial stable rich man and she saw the life that she lived her mother lived and it was somewhat entertaining and a doable situation that she probably would want to partake in as she got older Um, because these are the things that Portia went for the entertainment life uh, the celebrity life as she got older. She wanted to be a part of the who's who. And I'm like, mm, did you teach her that, Diane? Girl, did you teach her that? We should have been teaching her about her history, about her family's legacy, because then we would have this issue with the Underground Railroad and Portia looking for a choo-choo train down there to take her there. You know, we wouldn't be dealing with that, especially when her, she was part of a big movement for the civil rights she should know all this stuff like the back of her hand she can recite stuff out in her sleep you know she could have been a wealth of uh knowledge for the girls on the real housewives of atlanta when it came to the black um civil rights movement in the 50s and 60s and 70s because she was there 
She didn't need to read it from a textbook. She was actually living it. She could have been telling people at school, no, you got it wrong because this is what really happened. You know, yeah, she could have wrote a book on it and people would have bought that. But she wants us to buy Pursuit of Portia. She talking about some R.F. in now and how she pimped her own self out because that's basically what it was because it don't seem like no infractions was done from what how she gives it to us she wasn't forced to go to see him uh meaning the pie piper okay you remind me of my jeep oh uh, ain't nothing wrong with a little bump and grind you know that yeah she she wasn't forced to go she wanted to go she went then she went two more times she wasn't held against her will to leave she had the comings and goings, however she saw fit. But he just wasn't finna mess with her. Because he knew she couldn't sign. She might have been a good background singer. You know, a doo-wop girl. But not no lead singer out there trying to hold no tune and give us sensational vocals. No, 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 no. So she just settled to having a great banging body, looking pretty all the time, and trying to get wealthy men to take care of her. That's the bottom line, because she quit all her jobs. All her jobs that meant something. In the reality world, could have definitely kept her meeting new and upcoming and, and old entertainers in the business. But, you know, she just says she got this man who is a, a billionaire instead of her doing her own research or letting Lauren do her research on the man. She just fell over heels with him, started dating him before he was uh, actually unmarried, divorced, you know what I'm saying, and started a whole new life with him. Like, damn, Portia, damn. But uh, that's all I got, y'all. I thought I'd just bring that to y'all because it was on my mind. And I was like, I know the Williams family. The legacy of the Jose Williams family ain't trying to get on Portia. They ain't trying to take up Portia because Portia got a little Je Jezebel spirit going on, too, with her. And, and, and she needed to figure out what uh field she playing in. Is she on the godly field or is she on the money field? Because you can't serve two. You're going to love one and hate the other. That's biblical. Okay, so, you know, hey, if you care about Portia, pray for her. Because right now she's going straight on down to the deep seats of hell. Okay? Because she ain't doing right. She ain't doing nothing right. Whatever was right, she's making it bad. Whatever was bad, she's making it good. And the two just don't line up. I'm just going to tell you. And Miss Elizabeth, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You knew what Real Housewives of Atlanta was doing. You you thought the show coming on there with Portia and the foolishness she got going on in your younger generation trying to get spotlight and trying to tear their side. They don't believe in what Portia doing this and that. You ain't need no TV show for that. They know your family need to come on for that because we were the people. The viewers of the show were telling it loud as, as, as low as it was kept. We were speaking it out very loud. We didn't like what Portia was doing. But Portia, a grown-ass woman, she do what she want to do. She can make a fool out of herself. And if it turns into positive revenue for herself, then she sees it as a good. She sees it as a win. We don't, but we keep making videos, hoping she'll sit and listen to someone or, or get around some people that can actually tell her in her faith, what you're doing, baby, is wrong. You need to check yourself, get it together, and, and, and build up a legacy that's correct and positive for your daughter, PJ. Because then if you ain't doing it right, as Diane did to you, you're going to do the PJ. And that's a piss poor way of parenting. A piss poor way of parenting. But that's all I got, y'all. Y'all like it, love it, gotta have more. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification button, uh, that notification bell button. And you'll know when I upload videos. But if you don't, that's okay. Just like the videos and share. Share my stuff, y'all. Share it out, okay? But that's all I got. Y'all have a blessed day. And I'll see y'all next video. Bye-bye.